Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex, and today I have something really special to present to you guys. This is my original creation, the Marvel Future Fight 4.5 tier list. Now this includes all 172 characters that we currently have in the game. Uh, if you're eagle-eyed, you'll notice that we have to scroll down a little bit to catch the bottom characters down here, but they're all here, and they've all been neatly organized into different tiers, ranging from Mythic, of course, being the best tier, all the way down to Toilet tier, which obviously you can guess those are the worst. But that's not really the only way to rank characters. There's so many ways to rank characters and to discuss characters because Marvel Future Fight is such a complicated game. And so I had to approach this tier list in a unique way. Not only have I highlighted characters by their type, i.e., uh, speed Blast, Combat, or Universal, but I've also then put them into tiers. Then I've also, for specific tiers, i.e. the first three, I've ranked them within their class, not against one another in different classes, but within their own class, within their own type. But on top of that, I've provided you guys six different uh, kind of legend items or indexes that you can use to uh, better understand what makes these characters powerful. So I've highlighted what I believe to be uh, six uh, unique but important uh, different types of facets or aspects of characters uh, that differentiate them, make them worthwhile to invest in, to have on your roster, to perhaps tier two or to tier three or to get their uniform for, even some tips on how to build them uh, if you don't feel as though they're reaching their full potential. So I'm really trying, and I really tried hard, and I had some help from some friends of mine, so you know who you are, thank you. Uh, I'm really trying to get as much information and pack as much information as possible in this list. Uh, the only kind of major thing that I left out is uniforms. Now, for some characters, their uniform is mentioned in their name, so Archangel, for example. Um, but otherwise, I've left uniforms out because... Let's be honest, every single uniform in the game is helpful, uh, unless a character has multiple uniforms like Wolverine where there's some confusion. Uh, for everyone else, it's the, f the newest uniform is the best. And so I want that information, I want that logic to carry forward, and I don't want to clutter the list up too much with very repetitive information. If I had an additional seventh um, you know, icon for the legend that had uniform, Literally all 170, or well not 172 characters, but you know, 140 characters or something like that would have that icon because so many characters have uniform in the games, uh, in the game, and it would be more helpful almost to just notify the ones that don't have or don't need their uniform. But I didn't do that, um, and so specifically for this list, we're going to go through the buffs uh, now that the different kinds of aspects here, uh, they, they're kind of self-explanatory, but I'll still go through and mention each one. Support buffs are things like a tier two passive. So you guys are most familiar with Coulson, who's all the way down here in the uh, toilet tier, but also Shuri, Valkyrie, Ebony Maw, uh, the ones that give you more damage against universals or more damage against supervillains, and they also reduce the damage that you take from supervillains. But support buffs in this case will also include characters that can pass buffs on to other characters. So Warwolf has two support buffs. He has his tier two passive, which applies to all allies, but he also has a buff that gives uh, that he can pass with his fifth skill that gives all attack and crit rate and stuff like that. Um, another character, for example, that has a passable buff is Daisy Johnson. She can pass that damage proc buff onto other characters. Ronan has a an ignore dodge buff. Wiccan has a ignore dodge buff as well on his tier two passive. So all of those types of buffs, Mantis has a crit damage buff. All of those are listed here, and I don't think I've missed any of them, and hopefully I haven't. But if you any eagle-eyed fans can spot a missing buff, let me know. For strong lead, I basically chose every single lead that's above 30%. I wanted to ignore the 30% leads because there's just way too many of them. And I didn't want to clutter the list up and make it difficult to pick out the really standout characters. The only one that I want to really point out to you, I'll point out a few more, but the one I really want to point out is She-Hulk. I gave her two crowns because... To date, she's the only character in the game that has that type of leadership. Increased damage against males. And that does make her a unique leader and possibly the best leadership in the game, period. Well, against male enemies. Uh, so that is worth noting. Otherwise, uh, anything from you know 35% with Cyclops uh, and up 
will be uh, mentioned as a strong lead. So you know, Star Lord has forty or forty or forty or fifty or forty-five percent to blast. Beast has fifty percent to comp to uh, physical types. Goliath has fifty percent to physical types. You know, uh, Ronin has thirty-six all defense and thirty-six all attack to universals, so on and so forth. So all of those are mentioned as strong leaderships. Then you have the present. Obelisk instead of CTP. We've talked about the CTP list, and if you're wondering where you can find this spreadsheet, it will be added, it'll be in, as of this video launching, it'll be in the same spreadsheet that I have the CTP list and the uniform list. So they're all in one convenient location, and it's also below in the description. So for the obelisk instead of CTP, this is characters that traditionally uh, can do as good, if not better, with a you know extremely rare, but you know, well-rolled obelisk. So this is majority, uh, or the majority of characters that fall under this category are elemental types. So you've got your Psylocke, your Emma Frosts, your Thors, your Ghost Panthers, your Infernos, your uh, Iron Hammers. Down here, you've got your Hellstorm, your Robbie Reyes, so on and so forth. So for these characters, we're looking at at least three or four of their skills. Hopefully five out of five skills deal a specific damage type. Even Green Goblin has a little present there. Uh, dies easily is pretty straightforward. The character might be amazing, but they die really quickly. So not that many characters have this tag, and I didn't really want to put too many characters in these last three tiers under the dies easily tag. I understand that there are characters on this list that die easily. Uh, you can make an argument that Hellcat dies easily or Miles Morales dies easily, but they're, the reason they die easily is more a factor of being in the normal tier. They have no uniform, they have no level 70, they just have really low stats, no iframes. This is more a product of the, the, the way the character is designed and the fact that the character is old in their design. But Gambit, just he's a brand new character, he just came out, but he's, he's paper soft. So that is notable, especially because I put him in the legendary tier. Um, Domino is another example, and Psylocke is another big, big example, and so is Anti-Man. So you should know that when you're investing in Anti-Man, okay, his damage is amazing, he's got a good leadership, but he does die pretty quickly, even with the guard hit, even with the heal. Uh, Self-healing, again, pretty self-explanatory. Either they have a passive heal or they have an active heal that triggers off of a skill. So there's a lot of characters in the game, actually, that self-heal. Um, I may have left out one or two characters that have really small, um, infrequent heals. I almost wanted to take Satana off uh, because her second skill heal is just not that frequent, but she does have another heal on, I believe, her tier 2 passive, so she kind of qualifies. Uh, and then we have, finally, low DPS. So the little baby icon. These are characters that just punch like... I don't know, punch like a feather. They, they punch like a baby. That's just kind of the only way to explain it. So a good example of a character that does low damage, Ant-Man. Now, you can make Ant-Man deal more damage if you tier 3 him, if you mythic his uniform, if you give him 6-star Uru and give him a uh, CTP of energy, like I did. But if you don't do those things, if you don't max out all of his damage, he's going to hit like a little baby. And you're going to feel like he has low DPS. Another example of this is Adam Warlock. You can definitely build Adam Warlock to do good damage, but a, a, an average built Adam Warlock will do a lot less damage than the characters around him. Star-Lord, Cyclops, Magic. Same thing goes for someone like Ghost. So it is worth noting that um, what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to situate these characters but also compare them to the other characters around them as well as their individual value so i didn't want to overvalue characters just because they do one thing specifically good that is something for the meta snapshot the, the top 30 pve pvp list that i do in this one we're kind of just looking at the character and seeing what can they do overall considering everything value considering difficulty to get the character considering all game modes uh, how easy it is to play the character, and so on and so forth. And that's why we have all of this additional information here to make it a lot more easy to understand why characters are being positioned where they are. Um, additionally, I did put, I did try to put the characters in Mythic tier, Legendary tier, and Heroic tier in order uh, of value or kind of overall strength from top to bottom. So this is something that I'm still working on. It's not perfect yet. Um, but for example, uh, there are only two combat types in the Mythic tier, but I do think Captain America is better than Black Panther overall. Uh, there are some things, of course, that Black Panther does better than Captain America. His tier 3 skill is definitely a lot easier to, to trigger than Captain America's and to time. 
But overall, I think Captain America is going to give you more value and more punch than Black Panther. Same thing with, I think Deadpool is the number one speed character in the game above Quicksilver and above Winter Soldier. Now, this is only for within the type. Let's be very clear here. I'm not saying Deadpool is better than Captain America. I'm not saying Deadpool is better than Scarlet Witch. For this specific tier list, I think it's more important to look at the characters within their own type rather than to look at them compared to all characters. And that's what we do with the top 30 PvE and PvP snapshot. And that's where these two lists differ. So I don't want people to get, uh, you know, some kind of crazy idea that I'm saying, you know, Shuri is the best character on this list out of all of these characters in the heroic tier and Satana is the worst. I'm definitely not saying that. Uh, speaking of Satana, I did put her at the bottom of this list because I do think that her damage is probably the lowest out of all of these five characters from Loki down to Odin. But she does have the value of having an amazing leadership. She's easy to play and she is very valuable for the universal uh, female hero ABX day. So she does have a lot of value there and that's why I put her in that heroic tier. But her PvP value is pretty low if at all existent, uh, whereas Dormammu and Odin are still usable, very much so for Giant Boss and um, PvP, uh, Alliance Conquest, and then of course Sentinel's pretty solid all around with the leadership and stuff like that, and then Loki just has really dope damage uh, for his type, and he's got the level 70 to boot, whereas you know Sentinel's the only other character that has level 70. Level 70 is another thing that I want to bring up. It's not listed here, but it is being taken into consideration, as is Tier 3. I didn't want to put in multiple versions of characters, i.e., you know, Captain America Tier 3 is Mythic Tier, but Captain America Tier 3, Tier 2 is Heroic Tier, or he's low Legendary Tier. I didn't want to confuse you guys with things like that because it's just not helpful. Um, if you want to build a character, you should build them all the way. And of course, you won't be able to just build Captain America from Tier 1 to Tier 3 automatically, but if that is your end goal, if you want a Tier 3 Captain America, you should know where a Tier 3 Captain America stands. So knowing where a Tier 2 Captain America stands, if you ultimately want a Tier 3 Captain America, is just not really that helpful, and it clutters up the list, and it confuses people with multiple names, and this is not Marvel Contest of Champions. So we just have one version of every single character. I feel bad leaving these guys here at the bottom and never scrolling down to uh, highlight them. Good old Hyperion, guys. But uh, I also want to mention, for rare tier, advanced tier, normal tier, and toilet tier, I did not try to, and I did not rank the characters by their value within their class. So I'm not saying Yandu is the worst tier and that Domino is the best. I actually, I don't think Domino is the best. She might be the best just because she has level 70, but uh, actually Arachne might be better than Domino. But that is not something I tried to do. Once you get past heroic tier, uh, honestly, it's really hard to kind of nitpick and decide, okay, you know what? Silk's a little bit better than Craven, Cynic Alex. I think you're wrong about this one. You know what? I might be wrong. Craven doesn't have a uniform. Craven doesn't have as much CC as Silk does. Who knows? But I don't think it's really that important to rank within their own typing. I think it's just important to know, okay, Red Hulk's in the advanced tier. So I could make Red Hulk work, but he's not going to dominate. Uh, I think if you're looking for characters that dominate, if you're looking for characters that are going to give you above average to amazing returns on your investment, you have to look at the first three tiers. Uh, and depending on how picky you are and depending on your expectations, you may have to look at the first two tiers or just the first tier. But I think the first three tiers, uh, all of these characters that you invest in them, you will be happy with your investment. Um, whether you invest in them at a shallow level, which means just get them to tier two, or you invest in them at a very high level, uniform, CTP, full Uru, full ISO 8 set, etc. Uh, but I do think that these 63 characters uh, if you started a game and you started with all of these characters, you could complete 100% of the content, you could be comfortable completing it, and you could have fun, and you could challenge yourself. Of course, you also need cards and an alliance, but I'm just saying that these characters kind of make up the core of the game, and they give you a completely well-rounded roster with tons of, of power uh, and flexibility for things like Shadowland and Giant Boss Raid. From Rare Tier down... There are some gems here, there are some good characters, but generally speaking, you're going to struggle to complete content at a more challenging level, and you're going to have to build these characters fully before you can see some of their value actually shine. You know, investing in Misty Knight in a light way, just getting her to tier two, you're not going to be impressed with her damage. You're not going to be 
impressed with pretty much anything about the character besides maybe the leadership and those curves. Um, but if you invest in her fully, you may be happy with that end result. Now, of course, personal biases will come into play. Of course, some people are going to be salty that their character is low down on a list or whatever. That's fine. This is my opinion, of course, guys. I don't really feel the need to say that at the beginning of the video, but I'll say it at the end here. These ultimately are my opinions. So if you disagree with me, that's great. If you have constructive criticism, that's amazing. I hope to see a lot of that. I hope, to, I, hope I don't see too much of that because I should be right on most of this stuff. But I do hope to see your thoughts down below in the comments. Let me know what you think of this and the best tier list. Subscribe if you enjoy the content and you want to support me. Hit the bell if you don't want to miss any of my videos. And of course, if you like what you see, I hope to see you again tomorrow. Take care.